What's up guys? Today we're going to start by going over some of the features that are going to be included in the new Grundon Modular 3rd Edition. With that, regardless of the parts that you use to build the face, there's going to be some options that will be included for the end user. Uh, some of those are fairly handy, such as the customization menu, which can be loaded by pressing the center of the screen. You can see we then have the zoom, AOD, and date options. You can zoom into the face. So we have a multi-stage zoom for either the inner bezel or the full bezel, or no bezel at all, as you can see here as well as we can turn the AOD mode onto always or off completely or then just what would be your standard on mode which gives you the full face in active mode and the ambient face while in AOD. There is also the optional date area which will be located in the three o'clock position. We can have the simple date or the bubble, or the kind of the magnifying glass effect, or off entirely. Those are all of the customization options for the end user. Then we also have the flyout chronograph, which gives us the ability to have all designs be a chronograph without the need for additional dials on the face. By tapping the three o'clock position, we have the additional hands, which fly out and then give us access to the stopwatch functions. We can then stop and start at the 3 o'clock position or reset by tapping the 9 o'clock position which will then put the hands away. We also have an optional LCD display that can be loaded by pressing the 6 o'clock position. where we have just some basic digital functions as well as when the stopwatch is running and the digital display is open the bottom row which is normally your battery meters will also become a digital readout for the chronograph and we'll tuck that back away we've also included an optional GMT hand for all the faces which can be cycled by tapping the 12 o'clock position. By default it will load the persistent battery meter, UTC time, extra time zones 1, extra time zone 2, extra time zone 3, and then one final tap will tuck that back away. So again, it's all about including options. So regardless of the styles or parts that you decide to build, you will get all of those options included with the face. One of the other things that was included was an easy to edit script and a parts pack. But before we jump into how to use those, why don't we duplicate the face so that we can work on our own copy that way we have the original saved and ready for use later. So now we'll open our copied design. And then edit, go to the script so that you can kind of get an idea of how this script works. The script is all completely quoted so that it's easy to read and you can kind of follow along you can change the default variables and anything that you should not be editing it's very clear that it tells you not to edit so now we'll get into what really makes the modular aspects work for this design as you can see here we have basically the copied original and next we're going to show you how to use the additional parts packs as well as the expansion packs that will be released at a later date to really make this face your own. So I'm first I'm going to rename this 
to Explorer Black. And one of the first things we're going to do is I know that I want the enamel portions of this face to be black. And I've made that a global variable that can be edited in the script. So I'm going to edit the script. And then I'm going to scroll down to the, th the theme area. And you can see here the variable theme enamel. And we're going to change that to a not full black, but close to black color to still give us that sense of depth that we just won't get from a full black. And now you can see all the enamel parts of the face have turned black. So now when we get into the layer arrangements, here's where some of the things are going to seem either, they might seem confusing at first, but we have named every layer so that you can easily understand what's going on here. And we have here, our first few layers are just buttons. They are our tap actions of the face. And these red star layers are the ones that are really important. You can see here, we've named the face, we've named each layer so that it's easy to follow along with. And the red stars are dividers and usually contain additional information telling you what the layers previous and the layers that come next are so as we can see here, this section between these two red stars is going to be our background layers. Right now we're using U color, so we start with a face color layer and then a darkening layer. And as you can see right here, it says that this is a layer that is meant to be edited. So we can come down here. Each layer that's meant to be edited is going to need slightly different adjustments. This one in particular is just to darken the U color of the design. So you see we can bring that down to 30% to have a brighter face or we can bring it up to have a darker face. If you bring it up all the way you'll obviously have a full black design. We'll leave it at 50% for now. And then our next layer is the face gradient. It's what's giving us the darker bottom than the top. And as you can see, there are two little arrows before and after the layer name here. That's indicating that we have a part available for this particular piece of the design. So for the parts, I have not extracted them yet. That way you can see what we'll need to do. I've downloaded them from the download link. I have here the face as well as the parts pack. I use Solid Explorer because it makes extraction very easy. So we will just extract that file. Okay, and now you'll see we have all of the parts available for that face. And I use Quick Pick as a gallery because it has this handy option that allows us to only view Let's see where it is in browse, you can only view included folders. So basically I take my watch part folders only and I tell Watchmaker to always use Quick Pick. Just makes it a lot quicker so that anytime I need to edit a face, I'm only seeing watch parts. So now that we have our files extracted, we'll go back into Watchmaker and this face gradient layer here, we're going to change image. And as you can see here, this is one of the face gradients and this is another. So by selecting this one, we've already drastically changed the overall look of the background of the face. Our next layer is the face pattern. By default, you'll have this matte texture that provides just enough, uh, just enough differences to create a subtle sense of depth. We can change this image to any of the included patterns. For instance, this one here gives us this nice perforated metal design. Or we have the carbon fiber. Obviously we have this skull pattern, which you could then modify the color to black if you, if you wish. For the design we're building here, I'm just going to stick with the matte textured. 
And then this next layer here will automatically disable the background while entering AOD mode. It makes your faces play a little bit nicer with OLED devices, uh, Samsung especially. It'll allow you to more likely hit that 15% OPR. So you can see when we go into ambient mode, the whole face darkens in the background, which is quite helpful. Now the next area, as you can see by the divider, begins the actual face elements of the design here. We have the logo, which there are additional logos available in the parts pack. If you use a logo that is not part of the parts pack, you will have to add this times tweens dot zoom as well as in, in the position and the width area. If you use the included parts, the code will stay intact. Luckily, the asset replacement that Watchmaker includes kind of makes that a little nicer for you. Then we have, this, we have about three lines of text here that can be edited and modified to whatever you need. We'll change this modular to Explorer. This layer here that you can't see is actually the, the GMT hand name to give you a little indication as far as what time it is. I don't suggest you edit that unless you are also changing the code or the script work that handles the rotation of the GMT hand. Then we have our small ticks layer. Again, it says edit layer. You can come down here and kind of see what needs to be done. You can change the coloring. You can change the coloring if you want. You can modify the size. Then our next layer is the small numbers. Again, it's edit layer. That's these numbers you see around the outside of the face here. The big advantage to using the included watchmaker areas is that you can make really quick changes on the fly. For instance, now we are displaying the numbers 1 through 60, but we could easily adjust that to a 24 hour hand for the GMT use or turn it off entirely. Again, we're going to leave this as the default 1 through 60. Then we have another layer of branding that you can edit. It is the small text located at the bottom of the face. And now is where the really, another really big part of the modular design comes in here. Again, note the arrows pointing upwards to indicate that this is a replaceable graphic. When we replace the face type, we do need to replace four layers at a time. We have the metal, the enamel, the glow color, and the glow bright. That's what gives us that kind of true glow effect where it is brighter in the center and colored around the edges. It just gives us a little more realism. So we'll begin by changing the metal layer first. We'll scroll down to the face sections. The Explorer layout is th these here. Another advantage to Quick Pick here is you can see it keeps the layers in order. I've been very careful to name them in such a way that they're easy to follow along with. So we will start by replacing the metal layer and then changing the enamel layer as well as the glow and the bright. And then really quickly, if we wanted to test that, we could then darken the face. And as you can see, all of the aspects that needed to be changed there have been. And now, these next three layers are the date. You can see notes that say disable in script. That means don't delete these and don't change these. If you do, they won't work in the customization menu anymore. Next, we have all of our LCD panel. I would suggest you leave that entire section alone because you can disable that in the script as well. It is an optional part of the design. Then the next layers are the all of the hands, beginning with the GMT hands. Again, you can see the notes here. 
asking you to disable that in the script. You don't want to delete or modify any of the GMT hand as it will not it will then not work as an option on the face unless you fix it. So now you can see here the small triangle is to split up the hand section. We have the GMT to the left and the hours to the right. And then this little square here is telling you that these five images here all use the same image. And then the next three are different. Basically what you need to understand here is that there is, an, there is quite a few layers for each hand. As you can see the hour hand has five layers here and three layers here. So each hand has approximately eight images just to make it work properly. That's to include the flyout chronograph, the different colored metals and enamels, as well as the AOD mode options that will be included with your design. It does make it a little bit more of a hassle to change the hands on a face. However, luckily we've included all the code for you to make it very easy. So with that being said, let's say that we're going to change the hand image of this face. We would select the our the first hour hand and then change image and we can scroll down here to the hands section of the parts pack these first layers here are your GMT hand then you have then you have your sets of hands starting with hours minutes and seconds of each design I know that I'm going to want some straight bar hands for this which would work right here so we're going to begin with our straight bar hour and we're going to need to change that hand five times with each one going next and you can see again these are named the first one is the chrono hour the chrono hour AOD cover the hour shadow then the standard hour that you see on top and last is the hour AOD area now our next layer that we need to change is the hour enamel which will be the very next layer after the hour hand so the hour enamel is now changed now we need the hour glow portion which was the very next image and then the hour glow bright portion which is the one right after that you may find it easier to go into the script and change the AOD mode change the AOD active to three, which is always on. That way we can see all the layers that we are replacing. If that's more comfortable for you, then you might want to do that, but you need to remember to change that back before you release the design or else it will always be in AOD mode. Now we are moving on to the minute hands where again, the first five images are the same image, which I'm going to use these hands for. The great part about this is every hand size, length, and metal type has been standardized so that if you want to mix and match hand styles, you can do that. Face styles, you can do that. Basically, every part of this face has been designed to work as part of the pack. So it really gives us a lot of great options to get started with. Okay. And then I actually kind of like this second hand here, so why don't we just leave that second hand as is. We do have the straight bar or a lightning bolt design if desired. But you can see here, then we have these second hand areas. And then this here is the center peg. And then we come up to our next major section, which is the inner bezel. Here we have two layers of shadowing, which gives us this nice inner inner shadow that you see around the face then we have the inner bezel metal you see here that is not a layer that you would normally edit or replace but then here we have the inner bezel text right now the text around the outside it's slightly difficult to make out but on each minute there is a letter surrounding the inner bezel right now it just repeats the text diver over and over there are additional layers that are included with different wording the, the layers look almost invisible, but you can see them here. This whole section here is the additional words. 
and then the bezel AOD, which is just a layer that darkens it when entering the AOD mode. Again, it is not a replaceable layer as it would be indicated by the arrows pointing upwards. Next, we move to the outer bezel. Here we have the color base layer and then the color layer here where the first 15 minutes are of a different color. I am going to change the bezel indicators around the outside of this design. For instance, right now we have 0 through 60 in kind of your classic diver bezel. I am going to modify this to be more of a 24 hour bezel for our GMT hand. Again, these are two layers each, one for the metal and then one for the enamel. And now that those have been changed, I'm going to modify where this additional color around the outer ring of the bezel is. And how here how it says edit shader. That lets you know that you need to come down here to the shader area. Right now we have a segment between that goes from zero to 90. As this is a 24 hour dial, what I'm going to do is darken the lower half of the dial or brighten, bring the color into the lower half of the dial by editing these positions. And there we have a nice separation between AM and PM on the 24 hour spectrum. And then again, we have layers that aren't really meant to be edited. And then the menu is all after this and that's it. So now for the most part, our face has changed. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to edit the script as I want this to be a 24 hour GMT design. So first we'll edit the name and then the script and we will turn the GMT on by changing it from zero to one so that it will load by default with the hand in place and then tell it that GMT 24 should also be enabled because I have pre-included rotational values for both 24 hour and 12 hour GMT options. So now by changing that, you can see it automatically loads the 24 hour hand, which by default will be in your local time zones 24 hour hand. And that's it. Our design is now modified and complete, ready to use. We can still use all of the included options. The flyout chronograph still works the LCD panel, as well as cycling through our GMT options. And even though we've included the GMT option to be on by default, if we cycle through them, it will still also give users the option to hide that hand altogether. See, and then it's tucked away and not a problem. As well as all of our zoom features are intact, and that's it.